Hello, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Cooper. I'm a professor emeritus at the State College of Optometry in New York. I'm a consultant to VTI, which makes natural view lenses, Treehouse, which creates freestanding myopia control units, and Magic Leap, a augmented virtual reality company, and Alcon. Recently, we've produced a number of reviews in the area of, uh, of development of myopia and the treatment of myopia. And these are listed as the references here. The top two, which I think are clinically pertinent and timely, are both available in open access. So you can go Google them, find them, and download the PDF so that you can review the information that is going to be presented in this lecture. The reason why uh, myopia has become a major discussion is based upon three different things. The first is that myopia is increasing. The prevalence in the United States has increased to about 40 to 50 percent. In the Asian countries, it's over 80 percent. It's forecast to have 5 billion people affected by the year 2050. And with the increase in the number of myopia, also the magnitude is increasing, making myopia the sixth leading cause of vision loss. The chief ones being retinal detachment, whereby uh, the thinning of the peripheral retina causes uh, the retina to separate from the back of the eye. Cataracts. There's a greater incidence of glaucoma, and actually it damages the optic nerve and causes visual loss. Harder to detect because of the associated coupling with elongation of the eye. And the most devastating of those being myopic maculopathy, which is a slowly progressive disease from the thinning of the macular area, causing loss of vision. So preventing this or slowing it down has become important. We've noticed that the uh, increase is probably somewhat related to the occupations that people have. People who do more close work in writing are obviously more apt to be affected by myopia. Previously, this condition was argued if it's genetic or if it's environmental. We know more about it at this particular point and know that there is a strong genetic component which gets triggered by the environment. And previously, myopia was thought to stop somewhere around the age of 20, but that's changed dramatically as we're doing more near work on computers and, and uh, tablets and other types of devices. It seems to end somewhere in the 30s or even the beginning 40s from that standpoint. And we know that it's also related to the lack of exposure of um, outside light we're not sure exactly what the mechanism is, but it is not the inverse of reading. Therefore, there's a clinical dictum to make sure that, uh, um, that you have approximately two hours of light outside. Um, and if you have two parents who are myopic and you're getting less than five hours a week of light, there's a 60% chance of becoming myopic. And the whole problem gets even more complicated when we look at the relationship of UV light and ultraviolet light. We've been taught or told that ultraviolet light um, is, in, is uh, related to macular degeneration, that it may have a uh, effect on our sleep or ceridian uh, patterns. Um, on the other hand, the removal of uh, ultraviolet light seems to increase the incidence of myopia and cause uh, an increase in depression. So um, the cutting of blue light or ultraviolet light is not quite as simple as some people have made it out to be. We do know that the eye responds to blur and the development of uh, normal emetropization is related to how the blur hits the back of the eye. All the way back in 1988, Schaefer used various plus and minus lenses and showed that there's a linear development of the length of the eye on the basis of lenses that are interposed in front of the eye. 
This happens even if the optic nerve is severed or the brain is removed, and it seems to be regulated by retinal signals. What becomes even more interesting is if we put an occluder or transilluminator or half a lens in front of the eye, we get localized retinal elongation of that area that was blurred. And this even happens on uh, an MRI, which has been shown. It's interesting that in retinopathy of prematurity, where there has been laser treatment in ablation of the peripheral portion of the retina, these kids become uh, severely myopic up to like f minus 15. But when anti-VEG uh, medications are used to um, stop the process of neovascularization, the amount of myopia is much reduced. Again, demonstrating the strong influence of the peripheral retina on determining refractive error and elongation of the eye. This has been really supported by the work of Smith, who showed that if we create a lens with an unaltered image in the central portion of the eye, the peripheral blur will dictate the elongation of the eye or axial length changes, um, and that will occur even if you ablate the macular area. Smith suggested that ocular growth is, uh, is controlled by visual feedback. It's regional, local. It's uh, internal to the eye, and, not, uh, and a brain is not needed for this to happen. So if we take this information and look at it in the traditional correction of myopia, we can see in the uncorrected myope that we have uh, peripheral relative hyperopia. Even when we correct it, we, get, we correct the macular area, but the peripheral portion is out of focus. This out of focus area causes the eye to try to compensate for it or to elong or become myopic. And thus, if we want to eliminate the stimulus for elongation, we need to add plus into the periphery to change the image shell so that it appears in the third image on the right. When we do that, we remove the stimulus for elongation, and this becomes the basis of current optical control today, both by contact lenses and even by glasses. The other way of doing it is to try to interfere with the process, the, the biochemical signal that determines elongation. When we're looking for factors that will induce myopia, we need to look at the initial length of the eyeball, the number of parents who are myopic, the amount of time spent outside, the amount of time or intensity of close work, educational level, and where we live. These factors are related to the progression of myopia and should guide us a little bit in how strongly we want to approach the treatment regimen to try to slow it down. We're going to now talk about various treatment uh, approaches from bifocal lenses, multifocal uh, glasses, contact lenses, orthokeratology, atropine. Uh, historically, the first treatment of myopia was utilization of uh, spectacles, an attempt to cut out the uh, accommodative demand. There have been a number of studies using bifocals, and the Comet study kind of uh, uh, gave us a strong indication of how effective um, plus lenses were in reducing the um, progression of myopia. And uh, it was reported that there was about a 20% re reduction in the progression of myopia, most of that occurring within the first year. After the first year, it did not, it was, the progressive lenses were not very eff effective in reducing myopia unless there was a large lag of a combination or an esophoria um, in a particular patient. However, uh, there have been some other studies which have shown more positive effects, particularly when they've been done in, in Asian children with basin prism, and there seems to be a stronger effect in this particular population. And meta-analysis actually does show that when we look at the relationship of progressive glasses 
in slowing myopia down, they seem to have a positive effect. The positive effect is greater in Asian kids, kids who have esophoric, kids who have a larger lag of accommodation, and higher myopia. So uh, there still is a place for it, maybe used as an adjunctive treatment, but it's not very strong. The old dictum of undercorrecting myopia should not be done anymore. There are two studies that showed that when children are undercorrected, uh, that there was a actually a um, an increase in uh, myopic progression, and therefore uh, it should be abandoned as a form of treatment. Both of these studies were stopped. The use of uh, contact lenses has been historical, the suggestion that uh, gas permeable lenses will slow down the progression of myopia. Numerous studies, particularly the one by Clam, showed that there was no change in axial length with rigid contact lenses. Most people prescribed them at, uh, at ages of uh, 14 through 20, and therefore it appeared to slow down when myopia was slowing down and reminds us of the needs to be able to have some type of control. I think the real change in uh, the utilization of contact lenses came with REM's uh, uh, report in 2003 of uh, approximately 253 kids showing that uh, Ortho-K was effective in slowing down the uh, progression of myopia. Obviously, he had uh, no uh, control groups. However, there have been a number of studies subsequent to that time from Walling to Cho where either um, uh, historical controls or real controls were used with axial length. And uh, the clear results of these is that, um, that uh, ortho-K tends to slow down the progression of myopia by about uh, 40 to 50 percent. Usually in most of these studies, you get around a 20% dropout, which is one of the major problems with Ortho-K. Uh, and a very novel way of demonstrating that Ortho-K worked, uh, Swapic uh, took 26 myopic children. One eye was uh, elected to have an Ortho-K lens used at night to reshape the cornea of the eye to eliminate the refractive error while the other eye wore a rigid uh, gas perm lens so that we have a relatively similar period of time of wearing lenses and optical correction inducement. Um, and she used an A scan for the measurement of the eyes uh, and used the patient's own eye as a control and used what's known as an AB reversal crossover design where the Experimental eye becomes the control eye after a certain period of time, in this particular case, six months. And the other eye, which was the control, becomes the experimental eye. It was clear from her data that the axial length increased much more in the gas perm eyes than the ortho K eyes, and that there was a 40% reduction in uh, the progression of myopia. So that ortho-K is clearly effective in reducing the progression of myopia. Uh, both studies of five years and of progressions of seven years, which were retrospective in nature, have shown that the average age of uh, the average progression rates of myopia um, uh, are consistently much less in a myopic eye as compared to single vision lenses. The most uh, effective way of analyzing large number of treatments is using meta-analysis, which looks at the statistical variations of each one of the studies against the other ones. And a combination of seven studies, which includes over 435 subjects, 218 ortho-K and 217 in the control with at least two years follow-up, show conclusively that uh, the axial elongation in the ortho-K group was much slower than in the control group, thus supporting the concept of using ortho-K to slow down the progression of myopia. The only thing that is really lacking in these particular studies is a lot of good long-term data. 
withdrawal of the contact lenses for a period of time. The rate, greatest concern with patients who are placed in orthokeratology groups is the risk of micro, microbial infection. And um, this has been kind of shown to be low risk in relationship uh, to the number of people and hours of contact lens use. It clearly uh, seems to be less than it is in soft lenses for a number of reasons. Number one, um, ortho K lenses provide more oxygen than soft lenses. People who wear...